Hello everyone, this is Pepper Crochets. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be able to share this project with you guys because it means so much to me. So this is the outfit I created for the Stevie Nicks concert. I decided to do a corset top with a peacoat detail and a lace-up back and pair that with a crochet layered skirt all in white. The tutorial for the skirt is coming up next so please subscribe and stay tuned. This project is so special to me because I absolutely love and idolize Stevie Nicks and my father surprised me with tickets to her live concert and honestly it's been a dream of mine for many years so I was ecstatic. I had one week to create and crochet this outfit and I love the way it came out so I'm so excited to be able to share the tutorial for the top and for the skirt. If you know me, you know that I love Stevie Nicks. At any given moment in the house, I'm constantly playing her music and singing along to them. If any of you guys are also Stevie Nicks fans, let me know in the comment section below. As always, I have many more fall tutorials on the way very soon, so like, comment, and subscribe, and stay on the lookout for those. Let's get started with the tutorial. Before we dive in, look at this beautiful Princess Mononoke notebook I found at my local bookstore. This is going to be my crochet notebook, and I'm really excited that I get to use this. Look how adorable it is. Okay, let me stop showing off and we'll get started with the tutorial. Before we get started, we're going to need a couple of measurements. First, we're going to begin with our bust cup measurement. So essentially for the bust cup, we're going to begin with a small rectangle. And from there, we're going to build onto that rectangle to create the bust cup shape. So the first measurement you're going to need is from the bottom of your breast up to around the middle of your nipple. For me, that was around two and a half inches and that was about 13 foundation single crochet stitches. From here, we're going to build up our rows until the rectangle goes from the side of your breast to again, the middle of your nipple. The amount of rows you crochet is going to determine how much coverage you want for your bust cup. Once we do that rectangle, we're going to add three single crochets into the corner. And from there, we're just going to keep adding rows until the bust cup is as big as we need it to be and provides the correct amount of coverage. For this project, I'm using a DK weight three yarn and a 3.25 millimeter hook. However, since this is based on your measurements, you can use any size hook and any size yarn. Now going back to that diagram, we're going to be making single crochet foundation stitches that will be long enough to go from the bottom of your breast to the middle of the nipple. For me, that was around two and a half inches or 13 of these single crochet foundation stitches. I'll be linking a video on how to do these chainless foundation stitches. Once again, this is a single crochet chainless foundation stitch. In my video, I also go over the half double crochet and double crochet chainless foundation stitches. I'm going to keep working until I have a length of around two and a half inches and I'll meet you guys back. Okay, now I'm at two and a half inches and now I'm ready to start my row. So I'm going to chain one, turn my work and start working single crochets all the way down this row. So you're going to put your hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook for a single crochet. And you're going to do this into every single stitch all the way down this row. At the end of the row, chain one, and once again, you're going to be doing single crochets. And you're just going to keep repeating this until the length is long enough that when you place it sideways, it goes from the side of your breast all the way to the middle of your nipple. Here's a mini diagram because I lost the original footage. But once you reach that length that you need for your bust cup, you're going to place three single crochets into that last stitch. So since we finished at the end of the row, we already technically did one. So we're going to add two additional single crochets into that very last stitch, like so. So now I have three stitches into the same last stitch. We are now going to turn our work to the side and we're going to single crochet down the sides of our row. So there's no clear area or stitch to put your single crochets. You're just going to make sure that your stitches are fairly even and place your hook in and do single crochets all the way down the side. 
And again, you just want to make sure that the stitches are fairly even. They don't have to be perfect, but they should be even. You want to also make sure that you place that very last stitch into that very final bump. For me, that was where the knot is, where I began the foundation single crochet rows. So now this is what we should have. We're going to be working along that top and side edge back and forth. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're going to do a single crochet into every single stitch down the top of this row, and then turn your work and go down to the side. And basically, you're just going to keep doing this. So you're going to chain one at the end, turn your work, and then work back along that L shape, that top and side of your bust cup. And you're just going to keep adding rows. As you can see, it's starting to curve in a little bit. This is what you want. And you're going to keep adding rows until it's big enough to cover your entire breast. I really love this method of creating bra cups because it can accommodate up to any size and it's truly measurement based and you can really customize it to fit your breast shape. So at the end, this is what I have. For reference, I'm a size 32A. I'm going to be doing one final row and I'm going to add three single crochets once again into that corner stitch, that very last stitch. This is the last stitch that's going to be towards your midline or towards your chest. So going from the side of your body towards your chest, that last stitch. So here I'm adding two extra single crochets into that final stitch for a total of three single crochet. Now we want to clean up the edge here. So we're going to turn our work to the side and once again we're going to place our hook in. And there's no clear stitches to go into but we're going to make single crochet stitches all the way down as evenly as possible just to clean up that rough edge. This is going to be the top of our bra cup. The other rough perimeters of this bra cup are going to be cleaned up when we start working on the top and then when we do the peacoat edge around the bust area. Once you're done, you can chain up one extra, cut and pull the yarn through, and then you're going to go ahead and repeat all of the previous steps for a second bra cup. So here are my two bust cups. Now we're ready to start working on the body of our top. Here are some of the measurements I took down. So the total length of the bottom of my bra cup was around 6 inches long and the height was around 5.5 inches. For the body of our top, I wanted my top to go from a shorter end and start increasing towards the middle. So you want to determine how long you want the top to be at the side of your body. For me, I wanted it to be around 8 inches and that was around 36 foundation half double crochet stitches. So as you can see, it's around 8 inches long. Once again, we're going to be increasing at the bottom edge so it's going to get longer as it goes towards your midline. So you're going to make foundation half double crochet stitches to your desired length. This is going to run from the edge of your bra cup or the edge of your bust area at the side of your body all the way down to towards your navel area. Once you have your desired length, we're going to attach this to the corner of our bra cup. Before you attach anything, you just want to orient the bra cup so that it's facing from the outside and going inwards. You're going to find the corner stitch on that bra cup and secure this with a slip stitch. Now we're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. For a slip stitch, you're just pulling the yarn all the way through. So we are slip stitching to the second stitch and we're going to slip stitch into one more stitch. So a total of three stitches. You slip stitch the first to connect that chain and then do two more slip stitches. So now this half double crochet foundation chain is connected to the bra cup. Now we're going to half double crochet down that chain, the half double crochet foundation chain we just made. So those two slip stitches basically will act as the turning chain. We're going to half double crochet into every single stitch all the way down this first chain. And when we get to that final stitch, we're going to be doing an increase because I wanted the top to gradually increase as it goes towards the midline. I made it to the very end. I'm not going into the chain, I'm just going to that final stitch and I'm going to place two half double crochets, so one additional half double crochet. Now I'm going to chain two, turn my work, and into every single stitch, including the stitch holding the chain, I'm going to half double crochet until I reach the top. Once I reach the top, I'll show you guys how to connect this back to that bra cup and keep working from there. 
So as you can see, it's going to gradually increase this way towards the navel. If you want to increase more dramatically, you can also increase when you turn by placing two half double crochets into that very first stitch. If you don't want to increase as much, you can do every other row of increase. I'll meet you guys back when we get to the top. We now made it to the top, so we're going to slip stitch into the following stitch on the bust cup. And that will join that row to the bra cup. Now once again, we're going to be slip stitching into the next two stitches. This is going to act as our turning chain. Once I do the two slip stitches, I'm turning my work again. I'm going to start working on that body panel by adding a half double crochet into every single stitch. And then this is going to be the same as the previous row. So you're going to work all the way to that final stitch and then place two half double crochets. So you're increasing by one into the final stitch. So here's my second half double crochet. From here, you chain two, turn your work, and once again, half double crochet until you reach the very top. And I'll show you one final time how to connect this to the bra cup. So to connect it to the bra cup, we're slip stitching into the next stitch on the bra cup. And then once again, slip stitch into the next two stitches and this will act as the turning chain. So this is the basic pattern that you're going to keep doing until you reach the very end of the bra cup. Since this is measurement based and everyone's body is different, you might end at a different place than I did. So you might end at the last row ending at the bottom of the top. I ended with my last row ending at the last stitch in the bra cup. You might also find that when you get to the top, you have two stitches left on your bra cup. In that case, I would skip over that next stitch and just slip stitch into that very last stitch. And if you just end at the bottom of the top, you're going to just do one extra chain, cut and pull the yarn through. So I'm just going to keep adding my rows until I see where I end up. Once again, I ended at the last row ending towards the bust cup. So here's where I ended. I had one stitch left. So I'm just going to slip stitch into that last stitch. If you have two stitches, you can just go ahead and skip over that next stitch and slip stitch into the very last stitch. And this is what it looks like so far. So I have an increase that goes towards my navel with the piece on the side being shorter. Now you're going to repeat these same exact steps for the second cup. And then we're going to join the two sides together. So once again, before you do anything, you want to orient your second cup so that the pointy side is facing in towards your chest and the flatter side is on the side of your body. And do the same amount of half double crochet foundation stitches to begin the body portion. So here are my two panels, they are identical. And since I ended at the last stitch being on the bra cup, I just left my working yarn there so I could just connect it there. However, if you ended at the bottom or if you chain one and cut all of your yarn, you're going to place a slip knot on your hook and pull it through one of the stitches on the corner of the bra cup. And we're going to attach these two panels with a slip stitch. So you first want to orient everything. Make sure that the long bottom edge is towards the middle because that's going to be the center of our top. And the flat side of the bust cup is on the sides. So once again, you're going to join the two panels at the very edge, the very corner stitch of both of the bra cups and join them with a slip stitch. From here, we're going to chain up one, turn everything, and we're going to kind of sandwich them together like so because we're going to seam the center up. So to do the seam, I just put my hook into both stitches on both sides, and I'm going to do a single crochet. You want to make sure that you line up all of the stitches as you go down because since these two panels are identical, we should have the same amount of stitches as we go down. And I'm just going to place my hook into both panels through both stitches and do a single crochet until I reach the bottom and that will seam up this center. So now both of my panels are joined together like so. And to finish this off, I'm going to do one extra chain, cut my yarn and pull it through to secure it. 
so far we have the two bra panels with the two body panels seamed at the center and this is what it should look like so far here's my diagram of how i wanted my side panel to be so i decided i want to do two half double crochet rows with decreases on both the top and the bottom of the row so it kind of goes inward and then I want to do one mesh row and then just two regular half double crochet rows where I'm going to begin doing my back panel. This is going to bring me to about one and a half to two inches for my side panel. Of course you can alter this to make it bigger or smaller if you'd like. So to begin the side panel, you're going to find that very last stitch right on the corner of your bust cup. So this is at the base of the bust cup and we're going to pull a slip knot through that stitch. Now you're going to slip stitch into the very first stitch at the side of that body panel. Like so. And then to begin, we're going to do a chain up of two. And now we're going to half double crochet two stitches together the very next two stitches so you're going to pull up a loop you have three loops on your hook and instead of completing the half double crochet you're going to go into the very next stitch and pull up a loop now you have four loops on your hook and you're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on your hook and this will be a decrease from here you're just going to half double crochet down and again, we're going to be decreasing at the end of the row. So I'll show you what to do with those very last two stitches of this row. I'll meet you at the end of the row. So we made it to the end and we have two stitches left. We're going to half double crochet those two stitches together like we did for the beginning of the row. You're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on your hook and that will be a decrease. From here, you just want to count up your stitches and make sure that you have an odd number. If you don't have an odd number, that's okay. At some point in the middle of the next row, you'll just half double crochet two stitches together. Now chain up two and turn your work. And to do a decrease at the beginning of this row, we're skipping a stitch and half double crocheting into the second stitch of the row. Now you're going to half double crochet down the row. And once again, if you need to make this an odd number, you just half double crochet two stitches together somewhere in the center of this row. We're going to do one last decrease at the end of this row by half double crocheting those last two stitches together. To begin the next row, which is the mesh row, we're going to chain up four and turn our work. And we're going to skip over two stitches and double crochet into the third stitch. From here, we're going to chain up one, and we're going to skip a stitch and double crochet into the next stitch. And this is a pattern you're going to repeat all the way down. So chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet into the next, and at the end of the row, we're just going to double crochet into that final stitch. We're not going into the turning chain. So I'm skipping one stitch, and into the very last stitch, my double crochet. That will end the mesh row. You can add as many mesh rows as you'd like. I just want to do one mesh row. Now I'm going to do my two regular half double crochet rows. So I'm starting that with a chain up of two and turning my work. I'm going to place a half double crochet into that chain space. And then a half double crochet into the top of that double crochet stitch. And I'm going to keep repeating this. So half double crochet into the chain space half double crochet into the double crochet stitch all the way down and I'll show you what to do for that very final stitch. I made it to the end. I'm going to place my final half double crochet stitch into the third chain of that chain up before. So right there and there's my final half double crochet stitch. Then I'm going to chain up to turn my work and just do one more row of regular half double crochet. So I'm going to half double crochet into every single stitch. And once again, I'm just making sure that I have an odd number and this will make sense when we're doing that back panel, which is coming up. You can definitely alter this and add as many mesh rows or decreasing half double crochet rows or regular half double crochet rows as you'd like so that it fits to your measurements. And of course you wanna make sure that you take note of how many rows you did or what kind of rows you did because you're repeating this for the other side as well. So I'm just going to quickly measure that. So it's around one and a half inches. 
Again, you can repeat this whole pattern or do more rows as you'd like to make sure that this fits your body. So this is what we have so far. We have our two front panels and with the side panel that brings half of my top to around 8 inches long. Now we need to determine how long we need our back panel to be so that it can go around our top. So what you want to do is you want to take the tape measure and wrap it around under your bust, around your rib cage, and get that measurement. For me that was 26 inches. Now you want to measure how much length you have for the entirety of your top. As I showed you earlier, half of my top was around 8 inches. This is with the front and the side panel. So the entire top right now has a length of around 16 inches. Also, I apologize in advance that my notes are kind of messy, but I figured it's better to show it than not to show it. It might be helpful. You can also just keep crocheting and trying it on to see how long the back portion's getting, but I'd like to take measurements just so I know what I did when I want to replicate everything. So after I took the entirety of the front panel measurement, and now I have my rib cage measurement, I also subtracted 3, so I subtracted 3 inches from the 26 inches because I wanted to account for how stretchy my yarn was and I also wanted to be able to show some of that crisscrossing strap pattern in the back when we weave that strap through. If you want the strap to show more, you can subtract more. So my yarn was actually stretchier than I expected, so it ended up actually closing all the way through and I wasn't able to really show that crisscrossing strap that you typically see in corset tops. So I would probably, for next time, subtract around 5 inches, maybe even up to 6 inches. To figure out how much length we need for that back panel for one side, you're going to take your ribcage measurement, subtract 3 inches or however inches you want to show the back off a little bit more, and then you're going to subtract your front panel measurement from that measurement and divide everything by 2. So at the end of all my calculations, I figured out that I needed my back panel to be around 3.5 inches long. For the back panel, we're going to have a row with a specific type of pattern that needs to be on every even row. So to begin, we're going to start off with just one regular half double crochet row, which will be row 1. And then the next row, which is going to be row 2, or an even numbered row, will start that pattern. We're on row 1 of the back panel. We're just doing a half double crochet into every single stitch. The next row, which will be row 2, is going to start that pattern, which is just going to be two half double crochets together in a chain 1. I'll show you as soon as we finish this row. For row 2, we're starting off with a chain up of 2 and turning our work. We're going to yarn over, go into that very first stitch, and pull up a loop. We're going to yarn over again, go into the very next stitch, and pull up a loop. We now have 5 loops on our hook. And we're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops. So we're half double crocheting two stitches together. From here we chain up one and we do it again. So for the next two stitches you're going to pull up a loop. Don't forget to yarn over for that second stitch. We have five loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all five. So we're half double crocheting the two stitches and then chaining up one. And you're going to do this all the way down to the end of the row. If you're altering this pattern, just make sure that you do these rows on an even number row. This is what it looks like, it just adds some nice texture to the top. Row 3 is an odd number row, so we're chaining up 1, turning our work, and I just did a single crochet into every single stitch. So we're going to single crochet all the way down. Once we get to the end, I'm chaining up two and I'm doing that pattern again. So I'm half double crocheting those two stitches together, chaining up one, and then repeating that pattern. And I'm going to do this all the way down. And then once I finish that row, I'm going to chain up one and do a single crochet. This is what it looks like. I just finished my single crochet row. So I'm just going to do two rows of half double crochet. That will bring me back to an even numbered row. So I did the single crochet row, a half double crochet row, and then another half double crochet row. 
and then once again I'm repeating that pattern of that two half double crocheted stitch row, single crochet row, and then another two half double crocheted stitch row, and a single crochet stitch. Up until I reach around three and a half inches long for one side of my back panel. You can of course alter this pattern and do as many rows as you'd like, or do a different variation of that row and the single crochet row and the half double crochet rows. Now we're going to work on the right side panel. So to start that, we're going to make a slip knot and we're pulling the slip knot through the bottom of the top. We started at the top bust area for the left side. For the right side, we're starting at that final stitch at the bottom of the top. So we're pulling the slip knot through that stitch, not the stitch on the side, but the stitch at the very bottom. Now we're going to start by slip stitching into the very final stitch on the side of the top. So now we're at the side of the panel. We're going to chain up two. And we're going to begin by doing our decrease. So we're half double crocheting into the second stitch. We're skipping that very first stitch and we're half double crocheting into the very next stitch. Remember the first two rows for me was decreasing on both the beginning and the ends of the rows. You're going to half double crochet down the row and then we're going to decrease again when we get to the end of this row by half double crocheting two stitches together, the final two stitches before we get to the top near the bust area. We made it to the final two stitches, so I'm just half double crocheting those final two stitches together to end the row. Now we're going to chain up two and turn our work. And remember for this row, we're making sure we have an odd number of stitches. So if you need to, half double crochet two stitches together at the middle of this row to get to an odd number. So I began that row with a decrease by half double crocheting into the second stitch and ending with a decrease by half double crocheting the last two stitches together like so. So we're just replicating what we did for the other side. Now you're just going to repeat the same exact steps as you did for the other side until you have the same amount of rows. So for me that was around three and a half inches long. For the right panel, we're going to end with one more row. So we're chaining up one for this row and single crocheting into that very first stitch. This row is going to be for making the holes that we're going to use for the straps later on. We're going to chain up one skip a stitch and single crochet and we're going to continue this pattern you can make this hole a little bit bigger if you need to so if you need to do two stitches skipping skipping two stitches you can chain up two skip two stitches and into a third stitch a single crochet but for me i just did a chain up of one skipped a stitch and went into the next stitch and did that all the way down at the end you have this final row with the spaces for the straps and from here, we're going to start cleaning up our edges and we'll also add the peacoat stitch along the bust. So I'm going to pick off where I left off and I'm going to work down the bottom of my top, go all the way around. And at that point, I'll also add the final row for the other side to do the lace up strap holes. So we're going to chain up one and turn our work. This is the bottom of the top. So once again, we're going to place our hook along the bottom. There's no clear stitches to go into. And we're going to do single crochets all the way around the perimeter of this top. So I'm placing two single crochets into the corners so it gives it a nice clean edge. I'm just going to put my hook in now and try to make these stitches as even as possible. And then I'll meet you guys when we get to the other corner where we'll be placing two more single crochets into that final stitch in the corner just so that it gives a nice clean edge. I made it to the other edge and here I'm placing two single crochets into that corner stitch. This brings us back to the left side panel and we can start working on making those holes, the lacing holes for later where we're going to place our strap. So to do that you're going to chain one and turn your work to the side and once again into the very first stitch I'm doing a single crochet then I'm going to do a chain up of one skip a stitch and single crochet into the next stitch and continue this pattern all the way down so chain one skip a stitch and into the next a single crochet or however many you did for your top you could do chain two skip two as well 
at the end we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work again and continue single crocheting along the perimeter to clean up those rough edges and once again two single crochets into that corner so you just want to make sure that your single crochets are even we're going to stop at the base of the bust cup because once we get to the base we're going to start our peacoat edge we're now ready for the peacoat edge. I'm switching out my hook for a 2.25 millimeter hook. And from here, I'm going to do four single crochet stitches. So I'm gonna just go up along the bust cup and do four single crochets. And on the fourth single crochet, we're going to start doing that little peacoat detail. We made it to the fourth stitch. From here, we're going to chain up three. And then we're going to look for these two loops at the base of that single crochet. I'm gonna put my darning needle through it. Those two loops right there, that's the base of the single crochet. You wanna place your hook through those two loops, pull the yarn through, and then pull the yarn through the loop on your hook for a slip stitch. You're going to chain up one, and that's your first peacoat. And then into the next stitch a single crochet and then this is where the pattern repeats itself so four single crochets on the fourth single crochet we do the peacoat so since i did one single crochet already i'm going to single crochet into the next three stitches and then we're going to do the peacoat on that third stitch or technically the fourth single crochet so chain up three hook into the base of that single crochet through those two front loops and do a slip stitch. You're going to secure that peacoat with a chain up of one and then continue the pattern. So four single crochets into the fourth, a peacoat. And this is what they look like. You're going to repeat this all the way around the bust cups and I also made sure that one of my peacoats was at the very tip or apex of the bust cup. That will be for later when we do the straps for the neck and it kind of just hides the entry point for the straps and makes it look more neat and nice. So you're just going to keep going all the way down until you reach the base of the other cup. From there I just switched my hook back to the one I was using before and I'm going to continue doing those single crochets to clean up that edge right up until we get to that corner. We made it back to that corner, we're placing two final single crochets into that corner and this is where we began. So we're going to do a chain up of one, cut our yarn and pull it through to secure. And that will finish the perimeter and the peacoat of the top. As you can see it really cleaned up the edges nicely and the peacoat adds a nice texture detail for the top and makes it look more dainty. We're now going to work on the ridges for the corset portion. You can place the ridges wherever you'd like. I want to have three ridges, one down the center and one down the center of each bust cup. So I'm going to start with the center ridge. I'm just going to show you how to do them. You can place them wherever you'd like. The corset is seam side down right now and I'm pulling a slip knot from the back to the front of the top. And this is the final stitch at the base of the top all the way at the bottom and i'm going to work down the center i now have the yarn in one hand as i hold the top steady i'm putting my hook in through the back pulling up the yarn and doing a slip stitch so pulling the yarn through the loop of my hook so once again i'm placing my hook through one of the stitches going through to the back of the top and pulling up the yarn the yarn is wrapped around my hand that's under the top then I'm pulling it up and doing a slip stitch. This might take a little bit of practice, but it gets easier as you go along. And you're just gonna do this all the way to the top of the corset. Once you make it to the top, you can chain up one, turn your work, and now you're going to be working into those slip stitches that you just made and do a single crochet into every single stitch and that will create that ridge. As you can see, I'm pushing my hook through both the loops on that slip stitch and doing a single crochet. It helps to kind of fold the top in half a little bit along where you did the single crochet so those stitches pop out a little bit more and it's a little bit easier to push your hook through those two loops. 
you're going to work all the way down until you reach the bottom where you began. Once you reach the bottom, you can go ahead and chain up one, cut, and pull the yarn through. And as you can see, it creates this nice little ridge at the center of the top. I'm going to be doing two more ridges along the center of my bust cups. For working on the ridges that are on the bust cups, you want to make sure that you start from the top at the base of the bust cups and work down towards the bottom of the top. So here I'm just pulling a slip knot through the base of the stitch of the bust cup. I'm going to turn everything and once again I'm using my other hand to hold the yarn and keep the top stable. I'm pushing my hook in through those gaps where we did the half double crochets and using that kind of as a marker to make sure that I'm making a straight line. Then I'm pulling the yarn up from underneath pulling it through that loop on my hook for a slip stitch. And I'm going to continue this until I reach the bottom. I reach the bottom, so I'm going to do a chain up of one, turn my work, and I'm pushing my hook in through those slip stitches and doing a single crochet. You want to make sure that you go through both loops when you're doing these single crochets. And you're going to keep working until you reach up to the top where you started. I'm just going to continue and do one more ridge for my top. Now we're going to work on the neck strap. So once again, my top is situated seam side down. This is the front of the top. And I'm pulling a slip knot from the back to the front of the top. I'm going to do a slip stitch into the back of that peacoat stitch right there just so that my neck strap is in the direct center of the bus cup. So now as you can see the yarn is going to go behind that peacoat and it's going to be nice and centered. From here you're just going to chain to your desired length. You want to make sure that it's long enough that it can wrap around behind your neck so you could tie it. And you're going to repeat the same steps for the other side as well. Now we're going to work on making the strap for the back, the corset portion. You're just going to make a slip knot and make a very, very long chain. This chain has to be long enough that it's going to be crisscross at the back and you can tie it as well. We're going to weave in all of the ends of our top before we weave the back strap in. We're now ready to weave in the back strap. You want to make sure that your top is facing down and the two back panels are facing up. I like to place my strap down first. I'm going from the top to the bottom into one of the holes at the top. And I'm doing the same with the other side. And as you pull the two straps through, you just want to keep making sure that you have equal lengths on both ends. So this is what it's going to look like. From here, you're going to cross those two straps over each other, like so. Then you're going to go from behind to the front into one of those spaces again. And in hindsight, I wish I kind of separated them out more because it was a little bit too close together. I'm definitely going to change that when I wear my top next time. But you're going to go from back to front. Then once again, you're going to cross the two straps over each other and go from top to back. And you're going to keep doing this and weaving the strap from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top through those holes that we left until you reach the bottom of the top. As you can see, I made mine a little bit too close together, but this is what it looks like. You can make them more spaced out so it's more defined. Then for the very end of the straps to secure them, I added a bead and I'm going to knot the ends. And I'm going to use my darning needle to weave that loose yarn through that knot to make it more secure. You can also just knot the ends regularly. You don't have to add the bead. I thought it was just a nice little detail. Then I went ahead and did the same thing for the other side as well. Okay guys, we finally completed our corset top and this is what the final product looks like. 
I absolutely love this top, especially with the skirt, and I think it's going to look great with some denim jeans or a denim skirt as well. It has some nice textured details, and again, you can really customize this to your liking, space out the back a little bit more, and make that back strap detail a little bit more defined. You can also play around with the type of stitches you use for the body of the top as well, and experiment with using different colors, maybe making the ridges a different color or the peak coat a different color. Whatever you'd like, this is going to be very versatile and great top to experiment with. If you make this top, please let me know in the comments section below. You can also tag me on Instagram at Pet Pet Crochets and I'll be sure to leave a comment. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. I have the tutorial for this layered skirt coming next, so please stay tuned. As always, thank you so much for the support and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone!